Um, I want to start with an example. Uh, who knows who this is? Uh, just raise your hand. Christopher Nolan. Uh, so this is Christopher Nolan. Uh, Christopher Nolan has directed probably uh, a majority of the blockbuster hits that you all know today, from The Dark Knight to Inception to Interstellar to Niall Oppenheimer, right? So he's just, uh, he's just really good, right? And he's seen as like one of the best directors um, of all time, for me at least. Um, and he's also one of my favorite founders of all time. Uh, just like a side note, he runs this company called Syncopy, uh, and uh, that's the company that makes all his movies. Uh, and a lot of people also don't know this, but uh, Syncopy just has nine people who work there. So all of Nolan's movies, from Oppenheimer to everything else, they're made by a company that employs nine people full-time at least. Um, and of course, movies are giant productions, uh, but it's pretty cool how he's able to do these crazy, massive things with such a small amount of people actually working for him full-time. Uh, pretty cool. Um, now, at the end of the day, he probably employs like 500 to 1,000 people on set at, the, at a given moment. But those are like a, those are sprints, right? It's like, like for four to six months, he has those people, and then it's all over. Um, anyways, that's just more of a fun fact. I want to kind of a show, show a clip of uh, two actors, who you may, who you may recognize, uh, talking about working with Christopher Nolan, because it's kind of interesting. And there's nothing to about Chris. He's like, all right, we're going to do this. Yeah. Everything's very British and very calm. Like, yeah. there's no yeah. chaos, you know. And even when he's happy, he goes, yeah, yeah, happy. Oh, yeah. Like, everything is very normalized. And he creates a normalized environment for yeah. everyone. So everyone's got kind of wings of freedom the whole time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, nobody's pulse ever gets raised. Like, it's yeah. very, very cool. So it's kind of crazy to hear an actor, actors talk about a director like that because you can imagine being on set of a film is fucking, it must be insane, right? Um, and there must be an insane amount of like uh, unknowns, right, that have to be dealt with constantly. But I think what's interesting is from the outside, Christopher Nolan, extremely focused guy, right? Like when he's on set making these movies, uh, it feels like he's just, he knows, he's, he knows what he's doing. And I think that's true, right? Like, you have to kind of, like, think about it. When you're making a movie and you're on set with, like, hundreds of people spending millions of dollars a day or at least a week, uh, and you're doing stuff like movies like these, right, that a lot of us recognize today, like, you can't actually, like, there's not even a moment where you cannot be focused, right? Like, the game is set up where, like, if he, he cannot have an off hour, <laughs> let alone an off day, right? Um, so yeah, you just, there's no time to waste. But that's like kind of the nature of producing a film, right? Uh, where it's those really three to six really hyper-focused months, sometimes longer in post-production, maybe a year, two years. Uh, but yeah, every single day, the movie's not out, you're wasting money, right? And uh, in this case, it's his own company, so it's his own money. Be bad, right? There's literally no time to mess around. That's like the game he's playing. Um, but I think we don't see, at least for this guy, um, we don't see all those moments that led to those focused like three months, right? For example, you can argue that Oppenheimer was made in six months, right? Like end to end. But then you don't actually think about, oh, like this script, how many years did that take? Well, the man's been messing with the script for like four years. Okay, so like, sounds like he spent four years messing with the script on and off, right? Um, you, are, you probably don't see him and Hans Zimmer or whatever composer he's working with in the studio months before they even have the script. Or months before the script, or like maybe like, uh, yeah, essentially you don't see them essentially just messing around with new music and new sounds, right? Trying to get new ideas for what the film could look like and feel like. Because a, a lot of that's already finalized by the time you get on set, right? Um, you know, you don't see, you know, nowadays Christopher Nolan and IMAX is a really big deal, but you don't see all the times that he fucked around with IMAX since 2005, since Batman Begins. Uh, nowadays IMAX is a big deal. People love 70 millimeter, but do, a dude's been messing around with it since 2005 or whatever year Batman Begins came out. So, you know, he's, he's, playing, he's played a, role, a lot with his tools. So such that when he comes on set, yeah, like, uh, he, is, he, he is very focused um, when he gets on set. But what's cool is the guy goes hard, but only on something he knows he can go, like, extremely hard on. Um, it's not like uh, he's, like, thinking it's going to flop. There's, like, a high chance it'll flop when he's on set because, again, you can't afford that. Um, so yeah, when he, kind of those actors said it's very calm, you know, it's very British, they say. Um, it's interesting because it's like, yeah, I mean, to him, it's just routine. He's already thought through this like probably hundreds of times. 
such that when he gets on set for those three months, he's just locked in, right? Um, but again, we don't see all of this stuff. So we just see the final product. We just see the man possessed working on the film. We don't see like the four years, five years that it took him to write Inception, et cetera, right? Um, or the years that he spent just messing around with the cameras probably at his house. Um, uh, and yeah, when you see him at work, it's like a man with all the answers. And it's like you're just jealous. You're like, oh my god, the guy's so focused. Damn, I wish I could find that level of focus in my work, in my life even. That'd be amazing. But it's interesting. He just knows all the answers. And he feels like one of the best directors of the world, in the world. Um, another example, you know, uh, just like I, I, I use a lot of sports. I, I don't, I'm actually not really into sports, by the way. But I love kind of uh, sports examples and just mental, like parallels to sports. Um, this is Kobe, right? Like exactly same, if you think about it, very, very similar. Um, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Um, and yet from the outside, this dude's extremely focused, right? I, don't th I think when most of us think about Kobe Bryant, even if we're not into basketball, we probably think of him as like a very kind of locked in player that needs to win the game, right? Like that's what he's kind of known for. Um, and yeah, even on the, even off the court, he has a, if, if you know about Kobe Bryant, massive reputation for just being insanely driven and insanely locked in to the point where, um, yeah, he can be like a dick to work with sometimes. And he can be like, he can ask a lot of people around him, but had a reputation for just being like locked in all the time. But, um, and I think you actually have to be pretty locked in because he's doing stuff like this, right? Uh, I mean, this stuff like this isn't just random. This is in a giant stadium in an actual regular season game, and he just goes for it. Now, when we look at this, um, you know, it's not just him messing around. Like, he's probably done that before. He's probably thought about that. He didn't probably just go for it. Maybe some of it's feel, but he's just developed so much feel then over the course of many years that he can just do these things on the fly. Um, and he feels very, like, he just, he just feels like, yo, where do you get that answer from? Like, that's insane. Um, so yeah, during the game, you can't second guess yourself, right? Uh, again, you have four quarters in basketball. Um, is, what is that, 12 minutes a quarter? Not, many, not much time, right? You have to perform um, and you have to kind of like know what you're going in with. Uh, so again, with Kobe Bryant, we don't see him doing this for like, uh, what is it, like hundreds of hours, right? Um, at the end of the day, I don't know how many men's, how many shots this guy's taken in his life before he passed, right? Uh, he just keeps on shooting. This is after a game, by the way, he lost. He's just shooting. Just countless, countless amounts of shots. And you know, also what's interesting to think about is like, oh, he's probably practicing certain types of shots. He's probably not just doing random shit, right? He's probably practicing something very specific that he's thinking about. So even the way he's practicing is actually pretty focused. Um, and yeah, during the game, guy goes hard. And I think uh, we see that in a lot of his past games. Um, but I think what's cool is he actually mostly sticks to a plan. So in basketball, in many sports, you stick to a plan, right? You have some sort of structure that you follow. And yeah, that plan is kind of like, it can change sometimes in a given moment. But for the most part, you're, you've got a plan and you're locked in, right? Because uh, if you don't lock in, if he's sitting there like, oh man, this play sucks. Oh man, what are we doing? Um, all of a sudden, his mind's there. His mind's not on the game, right? Which he has to play for, for these four quarters. Um, and then there's me. Uh, I'm not Kobe. Uh, I'm not Nolan. Uh, and I'm very openly, I'm like, I don't have that level. I'm not at that level, right? Um, um, maybe it will get there in 20 to 30 years, but right now, I'm definitely not at that level. And I think that uh, you all should know, like, as you can we talk about this, I'm still learning this. I'm probably much closer to you all right now in terms of, like, um, in terms of, like, my own level of focus. Like, I'm not, I'm probably not that far from a lot of, like, just people. Like, like I, think, I, I think I kind of bucket myself in terms of uh, focus with a lot of you all. Um, now, I'm probably somewhat better, maybe not, but not that much better. Like, these guys are, like, way better, right? Uh, they are ridiculous. Like, Christopher Nolan, that's, that little focus is ridiculous. Kobe Bryant, to spend a year of your life uh, training 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day, that's ridiculous. Um, and to have faith, that level of faith, that level of patience, it's very difficult. Yeah. Well, like, for Nolan and for Kobe, they have, like, some kind of time to, like, practice mode and then, like, game time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Chris the no one's on set making the movie, that's it. like he's lost game time. Yeah. Like, how did that? Like, what is that for us? Yeah, um, uh, it's a great question. I'm gonna answer that in a bit. But the question was like, hey, Kobe and Nolan have game time, um, and then practice time. What about us, right? Uh, maybe some of you all just feel like you're locked in in game time all the time. Well, that's probably a problem, right? Uh, but we'll, I'll talk about that in a sec. If you still have a question, we'll we'll cover it. Um, just for context on me, I think maybe a lot of you can relate. Um, 
growing up, a lot of people would, uh, I would have this quote said to me a lot, uh, where I'd always be doing something new, and it I would always get the response, oh, Farzan, uh, you know, or my friends call me Farzan, hey, Farzan, what is it this time? Um, you know, and they would always be like, oh, what is it this time? What do you got this time? Oh, you're not, what are you selling now? What are you making now? Like, that was always my reputation, right? So from the outside, people always saw me as like hyper unfocused um, and just constantly off the walls all the time. But I didn't feel that way, to be honest, during that moment. Um, but I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, learned a lot over the years. Uh, and I think I want to go through a couple of things that have just worked for me right now. Um, uh, and I think it's worth just starting on a single point, right? Uh, I think all of us can agree here that doing uh, great things requires focus. I don't know if anyone disagrees with this statement. I'd be pretty interested to hear the take. But I think no matter what, when we see great things, I don't just mean for the world. Like if you want to be a great son, a great uh, brother, like that requires focus. If you want to be a great partner to someone, a great pet owner, shout out Marengo, um, you got you to gotta have great focus. Uh, so again, and of course now making music, building products, blah, blah, blah. These things require even greater focus, actually. But all great things require focus. Um, and I think that um, for a long time, I was very, very obsessed with this kind of like, um, is the word idyllic? Uh, idyllic version of focus, uh, where it was like hyper insane focus on one clear vision and path. Like, I always felt like bad that I didn't have that for like the longest time. Um, and I was kind of obsessed with getting that. And I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, why don't I have that? Like, uh, Christopher Nolan has that, or like XYZ like person has that. Uh, the guy who runs Airbnb has that. What's wrong with me, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, for a long time, I was kind of locked in in this mentality. Um, I think for a long time, it was kind of thinking a lot about uh, this guy and this guy's company. It's like, damn, like, he was focused as hell and made the iPhone. Um, how, did he, how did he get there? Like, obviously, it took a long time. Obviously, it took, like, a lot of, um, a lot of team effort. You want to hold on to him? <laughs> Amit, you want to hold on to him? Yeah, you can see Marengo. But yeah, I think what's interesting about Steve Jobs is that like you can look at the guy from the outside and be like, wow, like he actually had insane, relentless focus on a very on ben, on one very small thing, uh, which was making the iPhone. One very um, uh, obvious thing, which was making the iPhone. But I think um, you again, you don't see all the time that he spent exploring, right? Like we can even go down to the the keyboard. There's a book written about the people that made the iPhone keyboard. You can buy it. Um, the amount of years they spent just fucking around with the iPhone keyboard and exploring different ideas for years before the iPhone came out. It was like 2003 when they started working on the keyboard for the iPhone. That's like four years. So again, you all see like the final end focused goal of product, right? But we don't see all that time kind of spent playing almost. Um, so I think uh, exploring is often seen as a bad thing, actually. I think generally, uh, at least I saw it as a bad thing, uh, uh, kind of like when I was coming, uh, coming into all this. It felt like if you were exploring, you didn't know what you actually were doing. Uh, you were just kind of like fucking around. And I think that uh, um, I've learned now that, yeah, it's not just something you do when you're actually confused. It's, it should be something that's built into like how you're exploring your ideas and working on your stuff. Like if you're not exploring, then uh, at one point or another, you're going to stop understanding where it goes next. And I think that that's what's hard, right? You have to kind of be relentless, but then you also be like, huh, like I should explore some other stuff too. But then how do you balance that? I think that's some stuff I want to talk about. Um, and yeah, this is like the, one, of the main thing I, one of the main things I learned. And if something, if anything you take away from the, your 40 minutes with me here, it's, it's this. It's that exploring and focusing aren't mutually exclusive. Um, for the longest time, I thought they, they I honestly thought they were. Um, I felt like if you weren't focused as hell uh, all the time, then you didn't know what you were doing. But then again, I, uh, over time, you, you, you see that the people, you know, again, these narratives that are in, in the world today, from Steve Jobs to Kobe to Chris Nolan, like all these narratives, um, they're just narratives. Like what actually happened, like reality is always different, right? But uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, kind of something I learned. So for me, there's two types of focus. So I'm going to talk about two types of focus throughout the, the talk um, and uh, just kind of remember the types, right? So type number one. Type number one focus, I think, is the most clear one that most of us know about, which is like you are focused as hell on a very clear numeric goal or a very clear milestone. Like you, you're just locked in. You're, you're going for it. Um, maybe that milestone is directing the movie. Maybe it's winning that game. Maybe it's growing a graph. Maybe it's shipping version one of what you're working on. It really doesn't matter. It's just like you're locked in. 
uh, to that one clear thing, and you know that that thing is important as hell, and you're just going for it, right? Um, then there's type two focus. It's kind of more of a focus on playing, honestly, more of a focus on training, kind of testing your limits. Um, I think that a lot of times we don't think about this as focus, but uh, this is essentially focus on exploring, a focus on kind of playing, um, uh, which I'll talk about too. So again, those are the two types of focus. Type one, you should just remember, is kind of the hyper clear one, and then type two is more like a, yeah, you're just, you're just, you're just kind of messing about in a very, uh, in a very focused way. Um, so again, this type two could look stuff like, like, like this, right? Like for Kobe, he could be practicing his layups. Uh, it could be improving your writing skills. It could be trying out a new camera, playing with a new AI library. Like these sorts of things that keep your mind fresh, that keep you always thinking about new things that you could do when you're actually playing the game, right? Um, so w when you actually need to show up, you have all of that stuff kind of ready to go, such that when you need to show up, you're not thinking about messing around, you're just showing up, you know? Um, so many people over-index on, I think, one of these. They either, uh, A, index way too hard on number one, and then they go super hard on a goal, right? I think you all could probably think of a lot about people that just go super hard on a goal, and they, by the end, they don't even know why they're going hard on it. They don't even know if they care about that goal anymore, and they just question themselves now. Like, see it all the time in the world of startups, where it's like, a uh, founder spends weeks trying to get like $1,000 in monthly revenue, but then grinds on that for months and months and doesn't get anywhere, uh, and then questions if that's even important, and then goes down like a bad spiral, right? Uh, you essentially get burned out just, uh, just trying to pursue the goal, but then you don't ask yourself if that goal is even important anymore. <laughs> um, so again, that can happen. Uh, again, when you do like a type one focus, you have to be bought in as hell on that goal. Like you have to fully believe in it and fully believe uh, and be patient with it. And then there's type two focus, right? That's like where it's like you're more messing around. I see this all the time too, where people are like, oh, you know, I just gotta spend time playing around, messing around, exploring, right? Um, and then they just go way too hard on that. And then all, they just, then they, they've explored like 10, 20 things, but then, you know, end up kind of confused again by the end, you know? And uh, this also comes, this also is kind of exhausting. Like imagine how exhausting it is to like, you know, make a new product every week or like uh, mess around with a new program every week or something. That sounds really hard. Um, so it's like even making that your focus is like maybe not the best idea, even if you are confused. Uh, so again, both are really exhausting actually. Um, so for me, I have to balance these two. For me, these are the two types of focus, like me personally. Um, and I know like where I'm at with both. Uh, and if I don't balance them, I know I'll get burned out and I know I'll get, and then I know I'll get confused and then the team will catch on to it very quickly and they'll be like, yo, what the fuck are we doing? And I'm like, yeah, you're right actually, what are we doing? Uh, so I gotta balance that, right? So I want to give you an example um, from my own life. Any questions before I go on? Cool. Yes. So maybe this would be better to be at later, but um, what about the kind of case where you see the opportunity, you know that the only way to capture it is by going hard, and yeah. yet you haven't explored enough to feel prepared to capture it? What do you, what? Where it's like you see what you got to do, but then you get, you got to also explore, essentially. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, maybe I can kind of go through more, and if it's not answered, you let me know. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, like how much do I explore and how much do I focus? Um, probably answer more later too, but I think that. Uh, it, uh, it varies every two weeks. So like every two weeks, I actually actively change it with the team. And then we very clearly know how much we're playing, how much we're actually focusing on a clear output. Um, but I'll cover that as well. I want to give you an example from my life. Uh, so nights and weekends uh, was all, my whole life in 2023. Was, a year of my life was spent on this, on this thing called nights and weekends, and a year of the life of, of the team as well, right? Um, and I think for a lot of the team and for myself, we could argue that like when we ended 2023, we all kind of sat together and we're like, wow, like we all felt that that was the most focused we've ever been in our working career, which is saying a lot because a lot of these guys have spent 20 years working on stuff. So to say that, even for me, they felt for me like the most focused I've ever been in my working career. And uh, um, reflecting on that was kind of interesting. Uh, and it's like, why? <laughs> um, can anybody maybe guess why? Like, I don't, what do you think? Like, 
why do you think that that ended up being the most focused that I and the team ever ended up being? Yeah, Kareem. A lot of people were aligned on the same goal. A lot of people were aligned on the same goal. Like the team? Yeah, yeah like the team, like, exactly, yeah, sure. We all uh, kind of saw what was clearly ahead of us, yeah. But the goal was clear and you kept on making progress, so you, you didn't have to rethink it? Also. The goal was clear, we didn't have to rethink it. Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. And there's just a ton of people counting on you? Ton of people counting on you, yeah, that, that's a very important. Anything else? Yes. So like by S4, you knew exactly what to do because you've done it. Yeah, that's huge. So by S4, then we knew exactly what to do because it was our fourth time doing it, right? Um, yeah. Seasons are pretty intense. You guys didn't really have any day where you could just take like a day off. Yeah. Seasons are very intense. So like during nights and weekends, we rarely took a day off. Like those are straight six weeks where we worked. Um, yeah. yeah. Game time. Like the seasons were like six. Seasons were like game time. Yes. Maybe one more. Yeah. I'm here. Have you heard of the smart heat mnemonic? where it's like specific, measurable, uh, actionable, time, and time specific, time bound. Mm. And whenever those things are there, it's yeah. very easy to focus. And I feel like that was somewhat true for Yeah, yeah, no, love it. Cool, yeah. I mean, this is all stuff, by the way, which I didn't even think about until like maybe three months ago, where I, literally, I actually got some time to kind of step back and be like, wow, like, what was that? <laughs> that was kind of crazy, guys. Like, what happened there? Um, because then now we're working on our next thing, we're asking ourselves, how can we get that focus back? Or even have more focus than we had last year? Because I think we can get there. Um, but then, again, you have to reflect on like past times you were, you were actually focused. So yeah, during the season, each day was clear, right? We knew exactly what we had to do ahead of time because we had talked about it ahead of time. Um, and also, this is, forgetting even this is our fourth time running it, like, it had to have been planned ahead of time. Um, so like, we didn't just show, while we did show up every day and, and so, so, Generally, we did show up every day and ask ourselves, like, okay, like, what should we do today? But it was never, like, that much stuff to choose from. It was always, like, um, very clear. It's like, oh, do, should we send that email? Uh, should we send a message to the audience reminding them about something? Uh, maybe it's time to do a live stream. Make that tweet. Create a highlight video. Oh, yeah, we have, in real life, should we, have we locked down the venue? You know, there's actually not that many actions to choose from. There's maybe 50 actions, which is pretty low, um, and then you just go for those actions. Um, so, yeah, no issue prioritizing. Uh, there was never a question of what was high fry because it was so fucking, it was so obvious. Uh, like if Jeffrey was out there exploring like making YouTube videos during nights and weekends, I'm like, what are you doing? Like we have a very clear goal um, and that goal is to get people through nights and weekends. That's it. So why are we making YouTube videos? How does that help? Um, and yeah, generally it was crazy that we, you, you, know, you know, we hear about this thing called the flow state sometimes where it's like you reach a flow state yourself like while you're working, but what if like the thing that you worked on reached a flow state? Now I know you guys are single, single person companies, right? Uh, you all are like your own thing. But in this case, we're six people and these six people reached a flow state together, right? On what they were working on. Um, so like how does the work reach a flow state? Not just like you as a person. Um, I think that's worth thinking about. Um, and so yeah, we reached that flow state because again, um, <laughs> well one, yeah, like Daniel said, yeah, we, we had momentum. You can't let 18,000 people down, you know? Uh, that's just a great motivator. You definitely don't want to embarrass yourself and uh, that, that it plays a part. But more than that, it's just like, you just don't want to let these people down, right? They trusted you. Um, but honestly, I don't think even reflecting back on it that the numbers mattered. Um, season one was 400 people. Again, the numbers mattered, but I think not too much to us. Um, I think the main thing was that we made this very clear plan and just stuck to it. Uh, we knew it was six weeks. We knew what happened at the end. We knew what the live streams were. We knew we wanted to make videos. We knew we had to like uh, make a lot of uh, content on socials. Like all these things were known ahead of time, and we agreed on it together. And if something we felt like we agreed on, like we never agreed on stuff, we we felt like you know that's not important, um, or, or rather we we always made it made it clear what was not important to us, right? I think that's really important. Like that's also super important. Where it's like, you know, like um, just making up an example again. Like maybe Jeffrey says that we should take the YouTube. Actually, yeah, one thing was obvious. It's like. We should take the, the lectures uh, and then put them on YouTube, right? Again, this is an idea that was brought up. And we should, uh, um, we should uh, translate them to other languages and put them on YouTube, right? They could be very helpful. But again, we were like, well, I don't know if that helps uh, necessarily. Like, will that bring, what, what does that help, right? Will that get more people through nights and weekends? Uh, maybe, but we already have recordings. Like, YouTube already records. So like, just send them the link, you know? Why are we out here making, spending so much time polishing the videos, making thumbnails now? Like, what's the point? Um, uh, so little things like that we agreed on beforehand on what we uh, felt like was not important, right? Um, and I think the other thing reflecting back is 
Never during the nights and weekends did we ever question what we were working on. Uh, we never questioned what we were doing, actually. Like, there was, no, there was nothing like, damn, should we be doing this? Or, huh, like, is this the right thing for us to be doing? Like, we actually never asked that. Um, just for six weeks straight, mad focused, and just ran, right? We didn't think about it at all. Um, and uh, yeah, because of that, prioritization, prioritization happened automatically. Um, and what I mean by this is like, uh, by the day, you know, when you come in on a given day, maybe it's a Wednesday, you can clearly see what needs to be done, and then you just go do those things. Like there was no, prioritization happens when you have too much to do and you don't know what to choose from. In this case, there was kind of a very clear set of things to do, and you just did them. Um, so kind of automatically. And uh, yeah, I think kind of like Braden said, uh, this kind of felt like, you know, we were like in the season um, as like a basketball player almost. And that's kind of structured on purpose like that. Uh, we always felt like nights and weekends was like our on season. That's like where we show our best for six weeks straight, you know? Um, and that's literally why we structured it like that. Even as a team, that's what we call it, the on season. Um, and what's important about the on season for us is those six weeks. Uh, we were doing the things that we were good at. We were not doing things that we were not good at, or we were not exploring much. Uh, like, uh, I'm not sitting there trying to like figure out how to make TikToks right now during nights and weekends because it's like, am I good at making TikToks? Are any of us, are any of you good at making TikToks right now? No, great. We'll, forget, we'll talk about that later. It's not important right now. Um, so yeah, um, we knew what we were good at, and we just had that as the time to. Um, to focus on what we're good at, right? Does that make sense? And again, because again, what, I, what ends up happening is like, if you don't do stuff that you're good at, then you won't show your best work during that really focused period. That's like the on season, right? Um, and also we had a clear goal. We wanted a thousand new ideas created during nights and weekends. Like that's what we set like months before we even started. Um, and we knew that if we did this, uh, a lot of good shit would be done along the way. Like we'd make great videos, we'd make great content. Because for this to happen, you have to, a lot has to go right, you know? Um, so we knew that if we hit that number, uh, we'd be good. So again, we agreed that that goal was very important to us and we would stick to it and we wouldn't question it. And we never did, actually. Um, and then, yeah, af you have your on seasons, right? But then we had our off seasons. So uh, nights and weekends is uh, six weeks, right? But and then we had our off seasons. This is kind of what it sounds like. It's just time where we just reflect, play around, and test our limits again. It's almost like training, um, really. Uh, it's just time, it's just a time where we uh, don't have like a pressure to deliver per se on something particular, where we don't have to show our best necessarily in that moment. Um, we just had to like uh, show up and explore something new, that's it. So again, we kind of built in, well at least uh, we built into the company and how we work uh, time to play, which I think something is something you all should think about. As you, as you hear this, I know you don't have a six person team, but you need to think of yourself as a company no matter what you're doing. And I would ask yourself, does your company give you time to play? You know, like, Mattia, you know, you work at a company. It's your own company. Does your company give you time to play? Does your company make you show up like a madman every day? You know, like, I would ask yourself if this is even the thing, if the thing that you're working on is uh, what you uh, kind of want to be, is like treating you properly, but I don't know. Any thoughts there on that? Yeah, I play more if I give myself time to play. And sometimes I feel like it don't. Yeah, it's, it's actually really cool to separate yourself sometimes as like the company and then you. Like you're, no matter what you're doing, right? Like you're, you're, you're a single guy working on a single project, um, you know, and the company, what's the company called right now? Superdash. Still Superdash? I love it. So Superdash, um, um, does Superdash give Matia like time to play? Does Superdash does Super uh, give Matia time to like, uh, or does Superdash ask him to come in every day, nine to nine, and grind like a madman, even if he doesn't know what he's doing? Um, I would ask yourself, like each of you, that question: like, is it fun to work at your company, uh, even though even if you're the only employee there, you know? Um, uh, and yeah, this is a, this is a thought that I had many years ago at BuildSpace. So I was like, my job is just to make the company a really great place to work, and I think if I do that, I'll also do really good work. Um, so yeah, that's why we have off seasons. We train, right? It's because I really, and this is like my opinion, right? Uh, I think it's unrealistic to be on all the time. Um, you know, on being like you're giving your best effort every day, grinding nine to nine, 
12, 12 hour, you know, uh, 12, months a, 12 months a year, right? Kind of like uh, the classic hustle culture stuff you see online or even like most narratives that you see, right? Christopher Nolan, you know, grinds like hell during his set. I got to grind like hell. Well, again, I just think it's unrealistic to have, to be that on all the time. Uh, because my, my feeling is that you have emotions and you have limits that you don't even know yet and you'll probably break down <laughs> and you'll probably just like lose to yourself. Um, so again, maybe you do are able to be on all the time, but I just don't think it's realistic. So you should probably assume that you can't be on all the time. Um, which is kind of funny in the sense that most people don't think about it like this. They kind of assume that they have to be on all the time. Like there's not an option where you're not on all the time. Um, but again, it's kind of crazy to expect Kobe to be playing like it's the fourth quarter every single day, even during practice. So, yeah. I feel like a company can be on all the time where there are like a bunch of people where like a person as an individual has their off time and their on time. But the company as a whole is like, you know, constantly like putting out stuff. But if you're just like a solo like person, like you cannot be on all the time. I think even as a company, you can't be on all the time. It's pretty hard, honestly. But yeah, I mean, we're a company. Like, I can't expect everyone to be on all the time. Like, they'll burn out, you know? Um, and even you, like, you're Samia Records. Samia Records has one artist signed. It's Samia, right? Um, which is you. And I think that in that case, yeah, Samia Records needs to give Samia time to chill. Samia Records needs to give Samia time where he's, they're pressuring him to really get stuff done, you know? So I think it's a, just a, a way to think about it. Kind of detach yourself from the, the thing you're working on in a little way. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, even as a company, I have never seen it work um, like, like that, where there's always times, even at a real company, it's like they have on season, they have off seasons, you know? Like you release the iPhone, then you chill, then you make the iPhone too, you know? Like you have like these iterations. Um, cool. Um, and yeah, why did we do the off season? It was a perfect time for us just to question what we want to do next. You know, during on season, like when you're just playing, you, you're not even questioning anything. You're just like, you're, you're just like, let's go. Like, I'm running. I'm not even like asking myself where we're running. I'm not even questioning where the car is going. I'm just going. Um, but in this case, you need to have time where you're like, yo, do I, uh, what's going on actually? Do we still agree with where we're going? Uh, do we feel like it's the right thing to do? If so, let's keep going, right? So you have to question. Um, and yeah, this is actually interesting. Sometimes our off seasons were like very short, like just two weeks, where we'd be like, just mess around, take some time off, and then come back. Um, but sometimes you're a lot longer, right? Two weeks was the best case scenario. Um, this off season we're in right now is more like six months, like right now, like what we're doing. Um, this is very purposely done by me, uh, just because I felt like, you know, I just felt like I don't, I didn't by myself feel that there was a type number one goal, like a clear goal that I was just like excited to go hard on for the next 12 months. And I was like, I don't think I have to like pretend that I do. It's pretty exhausting. Instead, great, like, let's just spend time playing around for six months even, like, what's the problem? Um, uh, and I think that's, that's what we're doing now, right? But I think uh, what I found is that, yeah, you just need more time to play around, but I think that what's very important here is that this doesn't mean we're just spending every day messing around on something brand new, you know? Um, or just exploring mindlessly. I think uh, that would be a mistake. That would be terrible. That's just like us wasting our time and just exploring our curiosity every day in a really kind of unfocused way. Um, um, like for example, like, like I, I'll go back to this example actually. Um, I think that uh, even if we're still exploring right now, there's still very clear goals, right? So every two weeks uh, as, as Build Space, we set new goals, uh, very clear type one goals that we are aligned on. For example, this is our current two weeks goal. Like we set goals every two weeks, right? So within this two week period, we want to hit 500K accounts on IG, 50K views on YouTube, and we want to get this web demo of our product shipped. That's it. Like, these are still pretty light goals actually, but they're still kind of like uh, concise and clear and they're like type one goals. Uh, but again, like this isn't what I wake up in the morning to like go after, right? Um, they're more just guiding my play time. That way I'm not doing a bunch of random nonsense all the time. I'm, I'm still kind of focused. I'm like, okay, we're still making content on IG. We're not like fucking around on TikTok per se, because that's a whole different game. So again, it's kind of like, how do you play in a focused way? Uh, and again, the numbers can help you. Uh, so again, this is us. This is literally our numbers, right? These are literally our goals. The only three goals we have as a company for the next, well now, four more days, right? So we got to hit that, otherwise we didn't make it. 
Um, and yep, these update every two weeks. Uh, very simple for us. Um, and I think this is a really great way for you guys to think about your stuff too. Um, I think two weeks is a, uh, two weeks to me is like the perfect amount of time to try something, see how it went, and then think about what to do next. Um, so every two weeks, you kind of question the things that you are doing. Um, that's at least what we do, and it works for me. Um, cool, and yeah, this is uh, six weeks in to this off season, technically, uh, or actually more like 10 weeks in. Um, but every day is really cool. We're getting a little more focused, uh, and we're playing around a little bit less every day. Like we're getting more and we're closer and closer to that feeling of like, I'm ready, I'm ready to go you know, into the season, you know? Like, like put me in, coach. Um, but again, we're not quite there yet. Like we can feel it in ourselves too. Uh, but we know once we are ready uh, to spend like just six months degening like whatever goal we're trying to degen on, we're gonna go for that. But right now, not gonna do it. That would just exhaust me and I'd probably quit in like six months. Um, so let's not do that. Um, yeah, any questions up to that point? And then it's my last point here. Yes? What do you guys do if you don't hit your every two week goals? What is that conversation mean? Uh, we just ask ourselves, like, what happened? Uh, was it a lack of effort? Did something else come in the way? Or was it a bad goal? Or were we just lazy? What was it? And often uh, it's different reasons, but we just, we just question it. Um, but uh, usually it comes down to other stuff got in the way that kind of blocked our focus. Um, so, yeah. What was the goal two weeks before this? Two weeks before this was just to start getting stuff out on YouTube and IG. Just put stuff on YouTube and IG. That's it. Just put stuff and uh, uh, start to actually uh, get like a, the tech demo of the product going, like the little green CLI thing that I made. That's it. A follow-up is, would you recommend us to also try to tweak our goal every two weeks, or is that more of like a, a company thing? No, I think every two weeks, um, I don't know if it's tweak your goal more than is like tweak how you're going to do the next two weeks. That's how we think about it. So it's like every two weeks, uh, we think about where we're going, um, just as on what we're working on. And then um, how we think about it is like, for example, we do the meetings on Sundays, right? So we meet up every Sunday or every other Sunday, and we ask ourselves, what are we doing for the next 14 days? That's it. So that's kind of all the plan that you need. That's all the plan that we need, to be honest. So I think that's probably good enough for you guys, too. So yeah, uh, yeah. We actually don't have like this super long-term goal right now per se, uh, but that's fine to be honest. Like it's okay. You figure that out over time. Um, also, it's worth think. This is actually something I learned very harshly in a in, like last year, throughout last year. Um, just patience and faith in a plan. Something that actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I can be described as many things, but I don't think patient is uh, one of them uh, in 2022 per se. By 2023, I feel like. Dude, I got really patient, like just by accident. I got really good at being patient. Um, almost by, uh, by design, uh, nights and weekends is six weeks, right? But before that, you spend four to six weeks marketing it. Um, and then after that, you spend two weeks running IRL, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars making those events happen, uh, having people fly across the world. So in reality, um, we're really stuck with this thing called nights and weekends for like a minimum three months. So what's cool about that is actually like you can't change, you're not allowed to change. You have to actually sit in the box and then just get good at being in the box. Um, you can't stop the car and turn around, it's impossible. Like uh, there's a very clear plan and if you, yeah, like what does stopping the car and turning around look like in nights and weekends? Like, it, sh like stopping it, like shutting it down, like uh, canceling the in real life programs, like all of a sudden like people will waste their money and time, all of a sudden like X, Y, Z things will happen, right, that are negative. Uh, but again, we actually did this on purpose because uh, I felt like as a team uh, we had to kind of lock in. And so we made this system to help us lock in, actually. Um, and then, yeah, the only goal for those three months is let's go as far as we can. Um, but like, let's not like, be questioning where the GPS is taking us. Let's, be, let's know where we're going, uh, but let's not be being like, oh, can we go to McDonald's at that exit? Or like, oh, can we stop there? Um, like, no, like, we're just going. Um, and um, you can imagine this is what ends up happening, right? Um, you end up having these beautiful kind of like sprints of focus because all of a sudden you're not questioning the plan. Uh, it's almost like you're assembling an IKEA desk. Like, you don't question the plan when you're assembling an IKEA desk. You know, you just, you make the IKEA desk in two hours and you're done. So why can't you do that with your work? 
Um, well, it's probably just a, something that you have to figure out yourself, actually. Uh, but yeah. Um, also, I do want to be uh, honest here. Uh, when I say stick to the plan, things can change, OK? But at its core, like the thing stays the same. Uh, so for example, uh, one very change, one change we made maybe two days before the season started, season four, was we originally had guest speakers kind of that we wanted. But then like two days before, I was like, nah, cut it. Just cut it. So again, the, things like that can change. But I'm not like, should we cancel the season? <laughs> you know? Should we like uh, do other things? Like, no, like the core plan still stays the same or, um, on what it is, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, you know, I think a lot of you guys uh, know what crisis mode is. You kind of get, you can get in it very quickly. Uh, but during those times, uh, you know, we definitely never had a crisis. We did, there was no time to have a crisis. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's beautiful. And you know, you can set that up for yourself too, you know? Uh, like what is your on season? Uh, what is your off season? Uh, how do you think about that? So maybe during Bill Space here, this is your on season. Maybe you're not treating it like that right now, but maybe it is. I think it's worth asking yourself, like what point of the journey you're on, what type of focus you need. Um, and yeah, I, I learned this like last year, to be honest. Even building this place, uh, which was, which took three months to lock down the space and then three months to construct it um, and then design it and blah, blah, blah. Like that takes a lot of just faith in, in the plan. Uh, and a lot of money goes into it. Um, and it's like you just have to kind of trust that it'll work. Um, but you have to stick to a plan. You know? Otherwise, if you don't stick to the plan, you waste a lot of time, energy, human resources, et cetera. So, and yeah, I always make, um, oh, so this is what I say, I make time to reevaluate. Uh, yeah, don't ever be like mindlessly going down a path all the time and become an NPC. I think that's not it either. So, um, yeah, this is, I don't know if I should, I, this, is, this is worth mentioning. Um, sometimes the, the difference between patience in a plan and versus just waiting. You know, I think there's a difference. For example, like, Maybe you're putting an effort right now and something's working or something's not working. Um, like, should you continue being patient if it's not working? Uh, what's the difference between being patient and just waiting, right? Um, anybody, like, maybe give me a, a thought there, what they think is the difference? Yeah. It's just like you're still doing something else, like you're still working on something else while either way you're not really doing anything, just kind of still. Yeah, patience is like, Patience is like the, like, you did something, you just need to wait for the result. Um, waiting is like, you're literally just waiting around for something to hit you. And I think uh, a lot of people end up in that scenario where they're just waiting for magic to magically happen to them. Um, but it's not going to happen, right? So it's like, patience is a little bit different. Patience is like you did something, and now you just got to, like, await the result, you know? Uh, which can take time. It can take months, even. It can take weeks. It can take, or it can take days. It depends on what you're doing, right? So this is worth mentioning here because... Again, something I struggled with for a while. Like, um, and then, yeah, these are questions that kind of ate at me for a long time. Uh, am I on the right track? Am I wasting time? I ask myself these questions to this day. Um, is this the right thing to focus on? Should I change the plan? You know, all types of stuff. And, you know, asking these questions is definitely not bad. Um, it's just, uh, it's just, it's actually good, to be honest, because it's a sign that, it's a sign that something is up, but it's up to you to figure out what is going on. Uh, so yeah, just don't let these questions destroy you, uh, like internally, because I think they definitely can. And you can just let them eat at you, and it's horrible. Um, it's just take that as a moment to be like, damn, like, what is going on? Uh, like, am I focused? Am I doing the right things? Uh, what, could, what could change? Who, who do I need to talk to? All these things, right? Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Cool. Any questions? Thank you, Brady. Yes. Uh, I don't think you answered the question that I asked in the middle. Oh, nice. What was the question? I forgot. Um, it was the hypothetical scenario where you see an opportunity. Yeah. That opportunity demands game time focus. Uh huh. And you haven't done enough exploring uh, around that. Oh, sure. To actually execute. Oh, sure. That's actually the scenario I'm in right now. Like, I see a consumer product that billions of people can be using like in the next decade. Like literally, I see it in my brain right now. Like I see the opportunity, hyper clear, I build space. Um, but I know that right now, both me and the team and the company are known in not a position to chase it, like relentlessly right now. So it's asking yourself like, 
do you need relentless focus right now? Or do you just need more time kind of training up a little bit to get to the point where you can be relentless for like even a year? So my kind of thing right now is like, get company, get even myself to the point where I can be relentless for, for like 12 months straight. Because that's like a minimum that's kind of needed for at least what I'm going after, right? Which is building like a consumer product. Um, but it's worth asking. But again, it's like exactly kind of what I'm going through right now. Uh, but again, I don't actually know the right answer. If you ask Furcon, he may give you a very different answer. Furcon, if I were to ask him this, may just say, uh, like, what the fuck? Just be relentless. Just go after it right now. What are you doing exploring and shit? Now, again, everyone's going to have a different answer. That's the thing. Like, there's no, there's no right and wrong. Um, but I just know one thing, that if I'm relentless right now, dude, I'm going to have, like, an emotional breakdown in six months, and then, and then this is shutting down. Like, I already know myself. Uh, so what's the point? Uh, I'd rather take it my way. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of hard because you see like a beautiful opportunity and you're like, oh my God, I hope no one does this. Uh, I, I, I hope no one does it better, but it's like, oh, these are just the wrong thoughts. Like, I'm going to be the best to do it. And if not, that, that was faith. Uh, so I just kind of trust a little bit, but yeah. Yes. Does game time for a company require being together in person? Uh, for a company? It just depends, man. For me, yeah. <laughs> for me personally, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys have like a lot of remote stuff going on in your life or you have remote people helping you. I don't know, but generally I'm not into remote, but that's why we're all here actually. Yeah. Yo, what up? Uh, how do you understand when it's time to explore or focus? Because I mean, for nights and weekends, it's like pretty straightforward, I would say, because it's like six weeks program, you get yeah. roll only, and then maybe you some time to put an ads. But for a lot of other types of companies, it's more like, there is no really defined time I guess, so. You just gotta know yourself. Like even right now, now we're building a product, yeah. right? So I'm giving us six, I just told myself six months. It's gonna take six months for us to build the right team, to even get myself, proving myself to get really good at AI, um, and all these things. Uh, like it's gonna take six months to get the right pieces together for us to go hard, you know. Um, so that's kind of how I see it. But again, it's kind of up to you. Maybe you see that problem. Like that's gonna take me a month, you know. I need just a month to mess around. Um, it really does depend. So for me, how I think about it is like, you wanna have like, like, like you know how like a UFC fighter looks next, like looks really forward to their next fight, and like their next fight could be like six months away, but they'll train like hell for six months to fight one guy usually. Right? They'll just train for one guy. Um, that's really cool because now they know what they're being relentless for, you know, for that one fight. So again, for us, I don't really know what my next fight is clearly. So like, why would I just start training like mad, you know? So for me, my general kind of feeling is like, okay, as far as that, I need six months to play around with the team. I need six months to put together even the right team. And then if I put in those six months, I think by summer, I can be relentless for 12 months. Such that for 2023 to, to 2020, uh, from 2024 summer to 2025 summer, I, my head is like going, you know? Uh, that's kind of how I think about it. But it's different for all of you, um, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this is more for like, okay, why I understand when to focus. What about the other way around? Like, I'm focusing, how do I understand the need I need to explore? It's like maybe when I reach that goal that I set for myself, or it's like more like a feeling, okay, I've, I've given anything, everything to this, maybe I should just do that. Yeah. So what's the question, you think? If you, or like you summarize it for me? How do you understand when it's time to just explore? Yeah, that's actually a good question. How do you understand when it's time to just like lock in? Like essentially? No, to stop focusing and go explore. Oh, to stop focusing and go explore. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I understand. I think for me, it's like when the goal doesn't excite me. Um, for example, like a million downloads doesn't really excite me. A million users doesn't really excite me. Like, uh, so I gotta find some time to figure out what does excite me. Like, what goal does excite me? Uh, it's like, oh shit, building like a breakthrough consumer product that does X, Y, Z, that, that excites me. But you learn about it over time, you know? Because I'm not really driven by numbers, to be honest. Um, a billion is cool, though. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but like a million won't really get to me, you know? So it's like, you, you have to just know yourself, you know? Everyone's so different. Maybe uh, it's some amount of people in your fan base. Maybe it's like, just, for me personally, it's like, uh, I'll stop exploring once I feel like, uh, yo, I'm really good at my craft. Like, I'm good enough to actually, like, be the best in the world at this now, or be one of the best if I'm just, like, relentless now for 12 months. So, again, with the...
kind of AI stuff, I'm taking like my own little like dip into it, where I'm like, I think I can myself be the best, one of the best in the world, but then also have people around me that are, like, you know, the team has to make an adjustment now. Like, uh, they have to get locked in, et cetera, um, into this world. So it takes six months to happen. Yeah. Yeah, cool. But it's really just a feeling, dude. But yeah, yeah. So when you spend time like, in the off season training and stuff like that, you still have goals, right? Yeah. And so how do you, like, how do those goals like, differ from what your on season goal is? Is that the on season goal is just like, one goal for a really long time? Yeah, exactly. For, so for me, like when it's like, uh, like the on-season goal is like the one that you're like relentless for, and it doesn't change. Like it's just this is we're, we're locked in. We're not going to move, right? Like we are releasing Oppenheimer. Like six months, we're locked in for six months to release Oppenheimer, right? Whereas these off-season goals, they change like every two weeks actually. Uh, so right now we're working, we're focusing on focused stuff on IG and YouTube, and uh, building this like demo product, right? But then. Uh, Two weeks from now, it may change, and that's okay, like because that they're kind of meant to change, um, and meant to like discover what the right goals are. Uh, so again, we just need that's that's why we do it. But again, with all of this, just know this is how I operate. This is how we operate. This is not like normal per se, but this is what, this is just what works for us. So, uh, yeah, cool. All right, everyone. Maybe last question, Adam. Yeah, I can really relate to uh, like the IRL and almost this set date where there's accountability, yeah, yeah. it's like three months, you know, like the working in events and stuff, it's like really similar and I, yeah, yeah. kind of reflecting, it's that's when the most productivity and flow happens for yeah. me and shifting to content, shifting away from like those hard public kind of accountability moments, I guess, like I'm trying to figure out what does a, how can I create that in another way for myself when it's not a, you know. Um, when it's not like a hard deadline. You know, that's tough. Actually, like, uh, I only work on hard deadlines. Like, I'm actually, like, uh, I think I've mentioned probably, like, classic, I'm classically like, kind of lazy. Um, but uh, if you give me a deadline and I know I have to show up by the deadline, like, I'll show up, you know? So it's like, even today, like, we work on deadlines. Like, there's a deadline on Friday for us to get this demo out. Like, there's a fire underneath me, like, if I don't do it. Now, will anyone get mad? No. Actually, only I will be like, what the fuck, you know? Uh, and maybe the team will be like, what the fuck, you know? Uh, but, uh, you know, that's still a deadline. But it's not like thousands of people depending on us or a, gi a giant thing that's about to happen. It's just us. It's just me almost. So I think the deadline, deadlines are pretty cool. Uh, but again, you kind of know yourself best because, uh, yeah, build space without deadlines, like, I know what happens. Like, we just, we just do a lot of stuff and mess around, but nothing actually gets out. <laughs> so stuff needs, stuff needs to still get out. Yeah, yeah. sure. I, I have this strategy that worked for 50% of the people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's that I commit to the idea publicly uh -huh. like that I'm creating my second album sure. and it will be out by next year. You know, that gives yeah. me, uh, for some people, like it works for some people, it's like they can still push the deadline, but I'm the kind of person if I commit yeah. to the public to something, it's yeah. like, it's more like an ego thing or like for a sure. thing. No, so even for me, like, for example, why did we do the stream on two slash four, right? There's actually really no reason other than Stevan st thought that 2 slash 4 slash 24 looked cool, like as a date. <laughs> like that was it. But that happened to be two weeks from now. And uh, so we just kind of like told ourselves, okay, the moment I press this button, everybody is going to know that we're doing something on 2.4. And if we don't, we're going to publicly embarrass ourselves. And the whole team knew that like, okay, like let's not embarrass ourselves. So yeah, dude, so something about like making, staying accountable for the world, like, in the world's eyes is interesting. I'm not sure if it's healthy, to be honest, but it works. Yeah. 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 We just create art. It's all right. Yeah. From pain. <laughs> and with that, thank you, everyone. <laughs>